the sexiest thing in the entire world is being really smart. Welcome to Smart is Sexy, the podcast where we discuss self-development, growth, business, spirituality, and becoming a smarter, sexier human. I am your host, Kelsey. Hi guys, I'm Celeste. Welcome to our show. If you haven't yet, hit subscribe right now. Please leave us a review or a comment and send to a friend. This is how we keep providing content. <laughs> providing. I was literally thinking the other day, I was like, why would anyone leave us a review And then I was like, because this is how, this is like what makes me feel good and like makes us continue going. So please do that for us. Yeah, no, for sure. Because I was like, this is how, this just, it just helps us. Like people, I never really understood until we started creating content that like you need other people to, even if it's negative feedback, because like honestly, we're going to get into that with my good news minute, but even the haters, (laughs) even the haters, kind of, well, yeah, because when you have them, then you know that you're doing something. Yeah. Because true. Guess what? When, when no one's listening to us, I don't have any haters. That's a good point. That's a good point. No, so you're... it does mean like, listen, Kim K. She yeah. has, she's got a lot of haters, and she's doing something. No, she's, that's so she's true. She's doing things. Yeah. Um. Okay, <clears throat> you guys. Today we are talking about the book Shoe Dog and Never Giving Up. Wow. <laughs> so motivational so listen once we get into this you're gonna and once you read the book you're gonna understand well i think it's really it's like such a um well-timed conversation because okay so i don't know about you but all of my friends lately and just collectively what i've been seeing across social media and just talking to my friends like everyone's kind of in a really hard place right now Mm -hmm. um and myself included um well i was i feel better but everyone i've talked to and i think it's like such a collective of like the state of the world, Mm -hmm. the economy, coming out of a pandemic, where we all feel about policy. It's just like such a collective, right? We have mass shootings. We have a war going on. Like there's just so much, I think, collective, like collectively. Um, And then inflation and just everything. So every single person I've talked to has been feeling really down. Like everyone. I don't know if it's the moon phases. I don't know what it is. Except we're in the house of Pluto. Um, <laughs> you know, could be anything. Um, but Pluto's, I, so I think Pluto's that, still around. He's still a planet. We still include him. Yeah. 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 We still, <laughs> yeah. We still, he's like still in the group. He's in the group chat. Um, <laughs> and, um, but yeah, I guess, I guess house of Pluto is the ha- is like the house of chaos. I'm honestly not really that well versed in astrology, but I was getting my eyebrows done and my, um, she was telling me <laughs> this is the most oh, thing I've ever said. Um, but anyway, so, Every person I've talked to has been feeling this. So it's like such a good time to have a conversation about something a little bit more motivating. And especially because so much of our media right now is driven towards all the negative and everything that's going on. Um, and so I think it's good to to have <clears throat> more of a motivational conversation. I, I agree. I agree. Okay. But first. But first. Good minimum. Good news okay, minute. Okay. Good news minute. Um, oh, I'll go first. Okay. So my good news minute is that. Um, while Viper, like, okay, so events in LA always kind of slow down around the summer just because a lot of people travel outside of LA. So we always get a little slow in like May, June, July. Um, and every year that that happens, we get a little discouraged. Every year. Every. As if we don't know it's coming. But then we have to almost stop and remind ourselves that we're like, hey, Celeste Mm -hmm. or hey, Kels. Yeah. Like, we had the same problem last yeah. year and we'll have it the ne- next year. And yeah. we had it three years ago. No, it's so true. And so one thing that did happen this year though, was we started getting so many inbound requests for out of town events, which mm-hmm. I just was like, wow, because we got called literally in the past week, we got called for events in New York, events in San Diego, events in Miami and events in Austin. And I was like, okay, that's incredible. Like just one that our influence is spreading, that our brand awareness is expanding, uh, that the brand is evolving. So like that was so cool and really exciting. And I think as a founder, like you build and you build and you build and you know you exist. But like when you start hearing it in your city, it's amazing. But when you start hearing it from places you don't live, that just hits in like a completely different way. Like when we were getting inbound requests of like, you know, Hey, I want to do this with you in Austin or I want to do this with you guys in Miami or whatever. I was like, Oh shit. And so I put it out into the universe too, that I want Europe and I want Monaco and I want like all of those things next. But yeah, so that's my, uh, that's my big good news minute. 
Um, okay, well, yours was great and like work related, and mine's just what was, well, mine's what mine's, was yours? Well, now I have two. <laughs> okay. Um, I got to go camping this weekend. Okay, see that like wouldn't have been my good news minute. Okay, it was really fun. We like I had I got to go home, see my family, go camping. Mans came camping. Oh my god! So your mans met your fam for the first time. Well, he knew everyone because like we met at a wedding with our family, mm-hmm. so he already knew my family. But like this was like our first time, like really him like really getting to know mm-hmm. my parents, hanging out. So that was really wait. Fun. No, we need the tea. How did it go? It was great. I mean, he's a pretty like, yeah, he's a very likable person. Mm -hmm. I actually don't think I've ever met anyone who like has not had like raving reviews about him, which is so wow, raving reviews. Everyone, even my cousin was like being sarcastic when we were there. And he's like, does it suck that no one likes him? And I go, yeah, it's the worst. And I'm like, also like, he's just the type of person that like he can like, he's like a chameleon where he can like just find yeah. common ground with anybody he's with. Yeah. So like no oh matter, God, I love that. no matter the room, no matter who he's around, yeah. like he always can find yeah. a place where he's like, I can find right. a topic that we can both have a conversation. No, on. that's so cool. Oh my God. So, okay. So man's got five stars. On he got, advisor. Oh yeah. Trip advisor <laughs> loves it. <laughs> like, um, so camping was so fun. I also just really love being outside. I mean, I, very much I'm like a city girl. Like I love yeah. the city. I love a lot going on, but I love to camp. I love to be outdoors. I love yeah. kayaking. We went kayaking. We found an <gasps> island. Kayaking is so fun. Okay. So I am the opposite. I'm not like a nature gal. No. Well, I love like curated nature. I love like a botanical garden <laughs> in like Pasadena. <laughs> Um, but I just am never going to camp and Kels knows this cause she's asked me so many times, like, are you sure you don't want to try it? And I'm like, Oh, I'm sure. Um, but I do really like kayaking. Kayaking. And we discovered that in Texas. Yes. Kayaking is, I wish I had space to store a kayak because, and a close lake. Yeah. Because I. We should try to find one though. Yes. If anyone listening knows where we can kayak in. Let us know. LA, let us know. Because, and I don't want it to be the ocean because no, I will get no. eaten by a shark. <laughs> yeah, no, I can't swim also, I told, so that's a problem. I was talking to Mans and he was like. He's like, you have the ocean. Go kayak. And I go, I Hell would get no. eaten by a great white. Oh, my God. Or, no. No, we cannot. Or like a whale might come up and just tip me over. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. He, he was not. like, you do know that, that the chances of that happening are really slim. And I'm like, I don't we know. just don't know. We don't know. I could be the one. And there's one ocean animal that's like likes to fuck with people. I don't know if it's dolphins or whales I or think something. It's, I think it's dolphins. I could be wrong. But I yeah, think they like, like to fuck with people. So I'm like, I'm not risking that. I also can't swim. So we just, that just no. is not an option. So. So the lake is more of a vibe. Um, vibe. Okay. But then my second good news minute, which is funny, <laughs> is that we got our first hater comment okay. on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And Your at hype. first I was like, that's so rude. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but then I was like, oh, wait, that's great. Like this random person hated what we said. Right. And that's a weird way to look at it, but I was really excited mm-hmm. because I thought, oh, okay, so now we're starting to get to a place where people are listening to us and they don't like what we say. I'm n- I've never in my life left a hater comment on anything. I may never I may like Not send it time. to you and be like, this is kind of weird, yeah. but I've never I don't have the time to sit there and like make a comment to like never put someone else life. down. I've also never commented on like people I don't know. So. Never. Like I, 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 but I love that for people who do it. Like I think they should well, continue. Yeah. But, but like, I just business. don't, I just don't have the time. Like, yeah. But for you to like, for you to like take the time to yeah. say something hateful to me out of yeah. your day, I was stoked. Hyped. I was like, wow, this w- w- girl doesn't think we're funny. And I was so happy. Yeah. Not because like, I'm happy that she doesn't think we're funny, but I was just like, she felt the right. need that she, that we were worth saying something too. That's so funny. So I was hyped. I felt really good about it. Thanks guys. Thanks for commenting. Thanks for, well, I do even, tell everyone to leave a review. So and even comment. if you hate it, so it's even still if you a hate review. it, like still leave it. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a weird way. Cause to, like we want to know yeah. and I want to hear it. Um, yes. and also another thing I was thinking is like, if you want to see or hear us talk about something like leave that too. Cause that's also really helpful yeah. for us to know, you know, if you want to hear our, like our thoughts and opinions on yeah. anything specific. Um, 
then I would love to address them. Trust. I love, thoughts for days. <laughs> I love to give my opinion. <laughs> okay, you guys. So let's get into the episode. So, okay, you just started this book on Audible. Yes. Or so, you finished this book on Audible. No. So I, I have about an hour and a half left. Also, okay. I was had to drive to Reno because I had to take the dogs with mm-hmm. me. And on my drive, well, before I left, Mans was like, you should start Shoe Dog. So you have, because it's mm-hmm. like a like an audio book. I've never listened to an audio book before. Oh, you haven't? No. Really? Never. Interesting. So, well, that's, I take that back. I did listen to Mindy Kaling's audio book. Oh yeah. yeah so yeah. I did listen to those, but that's Mindy Kaling. She's in a whole league of her own. So yes, that's a different, that's, that's true. A, that's just different. She runs the world. She should start a podcast. I would listen to it every week. Oh my God. Me too. Yeah. So, so I purchased my first book on audible and Mm-hmm. Mans was like, I swear, I think, like, I'm pretty sure you're going to be obsessed with this book. Yeah. Like, it just, I feel like it's mm-hmm. right up your alley. So I was like, okay. So I, I have a seven hour drive there, and I start. Wait, I this da- book is longer than seven hours. Thirteen hours. This book is thirteen hours. Yes. Wow, that's yeah. a long book. Yes. Okay. So I knew I was like, okay, I've got seven hours there, seven hours back. Yeah. Like, well, I can yeah, yeah, yeah. most likely finish it. So. I also Audible's top tier. Who knew? Top I'm like tier. super stoked on audiobooks yeah. now. Audiobooks are great too for books that read more textbooky. Like that's really helpful. Yes. Like I just finished um a few weeks ago I finished Sex at Dawn, which is incredible but it's all about like just like the evolution it's like evolutionary study of like how we may and just takes us back to like primates and like how sex drives everything and because it's more textbooky it's it, like audible and um What's the other one? What's the pod, what's the other one? There's like a, there's Audible, but then there's like another version of it. Uh, but both of them are just so good for for me, in my opinion. Anything that is more like I agree. So, meaty. <laughs> so I was so this to me. I mean, I am now obsessed with Audible. Yeah, Audible. So, if you're listening, I want a sponsorship. Literally sponsor us. So I started listening to Shoe Dog, mm-hmm. and. For those of you who don't know, Shoe Dog is written, um, it's a memoir from Phil Knight, and he's Mm -hmm. the creator of Nike. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know much about his start. I I mean, other than like Nike being one of like the largest like athletic brands in the world, I didn't know much about him or anything and how he got started. So it's his memoir and he really breaks it up from, he breaks it up in years. Mm -hmm. So he goes through each year of like before Nike started Mm -hmm. everything. And I won't like spoil this for anybody because I really do think that like this book was incredible and Mm -hmm. everyone should read this for what, like whether you have owned a company or not. Mm -hmm. But the theme that I kept finding in the book is that he just never gives up. Yeah. There are so many times that he is about to go bankrupt. He's about to lose everything. Mm-hmm. Like, but in that final hour, he just always keeps going. Like, yeah. there's never just like, well, we're done. This is it. This right. is all. And there are times where he could have just been yeah. like, I'm out. I'm yeah. done. But I thought that there, I was so inspired and I felt so motivated mm-hmm. that with Viper, and, you know, other areas of our life that there have been times where I've felt really, really defeated. Oh, yeah. And the fact that he just, like, persevered through everything, mm-hmm. I felt really inspired by right. him. And I thought, wow, this is such a great book for anyone to read yeah. because how – what an amazing feeling of, like, no matter what, if mm-hmm. you believe that there's something that you're doing, yeah, right – you just keep going. Yeah. No, it's so true. Cause I was even the other day, cause it does, it is a lot like anyone who owns a business or is on, you know, a journey, like it, it's a lot. And the other day, and I think we've had this conversation on the podcast too. Like I was like, damn, like I was just so tired because I was like, we built a business and we made that was hard enough. And then we made it through a pandemic and that was hard. And then we came out of it and hit a recession. And like, I'm just like, it's one thing after another, Mm -hmm. but that's also just, those are just like the big ones, right? Every single day, there's like a million little fires. And also we do everything for ourselves. And so the other day I was like, you know, this, it is challenging. It's challenging to be a person who has to get up every day and literally walk into the fire and lead a team. I mean, leading a team is like an, is, I, it's something that most people, 
I don't know, like if you don't do it, it's really hard to relate to. But if you are in that space where you have a team under you in any like way, shape or form, whether it's a sport, a business, anything, it's fucking difficult Mm because these are other people. And I was thinking that the other day, but then I was like, you know what? Everything's going to, whatever you pick is going to be hard, right? Like you want to make it, that's going to be hard, but being broke or doing nothing, that's going to be hard. You want to be healthy and fit. That's going to be hard but being unhealthy and unfit is also going to be hard. Yeah. And so I was thinking about that the other day. I was like, even though like, cause I felt like so defeated in that moment, I was like, everything is, everything is going to be challenging. And it is about like getting back up and being like, okay, I'm going to do it anyway. Yes. The other, was it like what a week, two weeks ago, uh, we were, had an, like an Instagram live interview with contrast mm-hmm. magazine. Yeah. And they, the girl interviewing us asked um, asked us, you know, what are what is a piece of advice that you could give someone who's wanting to start their own company? Mm-hmm. And I I used to have like one thing that I would say, but then I at the last minute for whatever reason I like kind of changed my mm-hmm. answer, and. I realized that you are going to have like the, what I said was like money ebbs and flows and it comes and it goes. Yes. But not even just money, but like the good times and the bad times of starting something. Yeah. And this doesn't even have to go with a business. This could be a marriage, right. a relationship, a friendship. There are going to be highs and lows. Yes. And to expect that mm-hmm. will save you yes. because everyone thinks, oh, you've made it. Like mm-hmm. once... Once you're yep. in a marriage, it's smooth sailing. Mm-hmm. Once you make it in your career, it's yeah. smooth sailing. It's not. It's there not. are times where you're like at the top. And that's kind of what I was learning from this book as well. Like there were moments when he was like talking about going public, yet they were still mm-hmm. $57,000 negative. Yeah. They weren't, they were not cash positive mm-hmm. at all. Yeah. Banks were literally being like, we're not taking mm-hmm. your business anymore. Mm-hmm. And so I thought about that. I'm like, to go public is a huge deal for a company. Mm-hmm. He still yeah. was not cash positive yeah. and they were struggling. Like it, it doesn't matter. You have, you have the highs and mm-hmm. you have the lows and you really do have to celebrate the highs when you have them mm-hmm. and not, not get on your high horse of like nothing bad's going to ever mm-hmm. happen to us, but just, and not, not that you need to anticipate the negative side of things, not that you need to like be like, oh, but this won't last long, mm-hmm. but just to be like, okay, we're going to celebrate these these victories yeah. and these moments and then also expect that like, but when the bad times do come, we're going to yeah. be equipped to handle them. No, it's very true. I think that's a, also a common misconception that a lot of people do hold about both, you know, businesses, relationships, whatever. And then in, like you said, like in the world of business, we see these people get these crazy valuations or they get cleared to go public and we think, oh, they've made it. But the reality is you actually haven't. Like, let's say, for example, you get a billion dollar valuation. It's actually, I mean, there's like a one in a million chance that you're actually going to grow and make more than that, right? Like you're probably not going to like triple your revenue. And I mean, evaluation is just speculation for the most part anyways. But so that's the other thing. Like we see that so much where it's like we give, we glorify people with these like crazy numbers or these crazy like um, rewards. But it's like, where do you go from there? You know, because there's still more work to be done. Like just because you hit some like title doesn't mean that all of a sudden everything is like smooth sailing forever. Mm -hmm. And same thing you said about marriage, because I was thinking about that too, like the other day just because I have a lot of friends in my life that we have great relationships and we've never argued and we've never hit like a, a tough place. We've never had a hard conversation, nothing, but those are not really the relationships that I would remember or the relationships that I value the most. The ones I value the most are actually the ones where it's like, Oh no, we've actually been through the lows, but we got through them or we, you know, had to have a harder conversation Mm -hmm. or we did have something come up and we made it through. Cause I think that's what gives you that like resilience, that durability without that. It's kind of like, you just don't really know. Like, and cause that's the other thing too. Like if you just stay in the middle, you know, that's cool, but it never goes up and it it never goes down either, but it kind of just like stays in the middle. And so that is, I totally agree with what you said. Like the lows won't last, but they will come and it's just, that is like that natural ebb and flow. And to really like push through when those lows happen, Mm -hmm. it's like not kind of giving up. And I think 
<clears throat> that there's obviously a point and you have to know the point of when you're in something that's toxic, whether that yes. be in a friendship, a romantic relationship, or with your business. You have to know that something is when something's not healthy for you anymore. Yes. But I also think that we do I, I have seen a lot of people give up on things a little mm-hmm. too easily sometimes right. when things got tough. Yeah. They didn't they didn't just be like, okay, no, we're gonna we're gonna dig in our heels and push through this. And there's a balance. I'm not saying like if you're in a an abuse of anything, yeah, like then no, that's that's not what right. I'm referring to in this situation. But pushing through because mm-hmm. you're like, no, this is worth it. Yeah. There's something on the other side that's worth pushing through mm-hmm. for this. And I actually think about the beginning of my parents' relationship a lot. Mm -hmm. When my parents got married, Mm -hmm. like this was both their second marriage. And there was they their first three years of marriage, they joke, Mm -hmm. was very, very tumultuous. Mm -hmm. And they for whatever reason, they just like pushed through and Mm -hmm. like they kept making it work. Yeah. Now they have like in my opinion, the world's best marriage. Like right. they have so much respect and love for one right. another. But like they didn't just like throw in the towel because things yeah. were too hard. Like it was just like, no, we chose each other mm-hmm. and we're gonna continue to do this. And for whatever reason, they they literally just didn't give up. Yeah. And I think there is something to be said mm-hmm. for when things are really challenging. And it could yeah. be a year or two that things are really challenging. Mm-hmm. But just knowing like no, I, we've got something good here. Yeah. And again, that's with business, friendship, yeah, family, marriage, anything. Like, no, there's something good here. There's something yeah. good that we're building. And it's going to be hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Life can be challenging. Yeah. And throughout this entire book, just like hearing him, like, he never says, like, oh, I just I wasn't gonna give up. He yeah. just was he just Yeah. Every t- every year, there was something that yeah. popped up that he's like, we keep going, we keep mm-hmm. building. And he, his big thing that he keeps saying is like, grow or die. Yeah. You grow or you die. It's so true. And like, we've said that before too, like you either evolve or repeat, like those are your two yeah. options. And that's something too, where whatever you are pursuing, like for us, it's being a founder and, you know, but it could be whatever. It could be a career in athletics or music or whatever it is to you. Like you do have to decide like, to stay in that mindset of, no, I'm in this for the long haul, Mm -hmm. whatever that is, whatever, whatever your version of that is. And we've talked about it before of like the sunk cost fallacy, which is like, you don't want to continue investing time in something that's literally going nowhere. And a lot of times, like there's two sides to that, because sometimes we invest too much time into something that's going nowhere because we think I've already put time into this. I've already put money into this. So let me just continue. Um, But there's a big difference between that and just staying true to you and your goals or your relationships or whatever like you really believe in Mm -hmm. and trusting your gut on that because anything that you pick or you pursue like it's not going to be easy people look at us now and ask us for advice on business or on building a team on leadership hiring money all of these things and actually there's some people that even ask us now that we used to look at them thinking we wanted their advice um But really like what I've figured out over the years and like being around so many like successful people and CEOs and executives and celebrities and all of that is like nobody really knows. Like nobody really has the answer and it's always the people who are just really consistent. It's always the people who just said, I'm going to put the time in. I'm going to put the work in. I'm going to just keep going. Like if you just keep going at some point you win, right? Like there's no other option. Yeah. And Basically, I also was thinking about this too, is that a couple months ago, we got hit with something really challenging that hit me a lot harder than I was even thinking was going to hit me to the okay. point where it, it shook me where it, to the, where I was like, what am I doing? What have, what, ha- what is even happening? And I'm not going to go into any detail cause it's like a private thing and sorry, friends, you don't get to hear everything in my life, <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but, um, it, it hit me really hard and, and honestly, mm-hmm. like really made me question everything that we had created. Yep. And I'm just being transparent. Like it did. It made me question everything. Mm-hmm. And I, I had been, no, I didn't tell very many people. I told you man's and my mom and that yeah. was it. Oh, obviously you knew because like you were a part of it. <laughs> but but when I told Mans what was going on, he w- he was listening. He was like, "Yeah, that sucks." He's like, "But you know what, Kels? He's like, this is going to make mm-hmm. for a great 
story down the road mm-hmm. that you will then also be able to inspire someone else that is yeah. going through something hard at the moment. Mm-hmm. And I listen to him and go, no, you're right. This is good because you and I've always wanted to be a role model for younger mm-hmm. people. So he was like, this, this is just part of your story. Yeah. This is just part of a hiccup. This so is just true. part of a moment. And I was like, wow. But then when I was listening to the book, I thought back on him saying that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, you're right. Because I would not have listening to Phil Knight's story and his memoir of how every time mm-hmm. he just gets back up, I was so motivated and inspired that I was like, oh, we can we can take it on is, anything. Yeah. And it, then it made me think back to what he said of mm-hmm. being like, no, you're right. This is just part of a story. Yeah. It's just part of like, this sucks and we got to figure it out yeah. and learn how to navigate. And I, and I obviously was like, okay, thank you. That was great advice. But then when I was listening to the book, I thought back to that moment where I was like, oh no, because mm-hmm. this story would not have done anything for me if he hadn't have had all of these in- yeah. insanely challenging things go on mm-hmm. where then you're like, oh no, I, I can, I can take on anything. Yeah. Viper will make it. We'll, we'll take on anything we yeah. need to. And it really did. I was like, wow. Okay. Yeah. You're never going to read the book of someone who was just like, everything was perfect. The end. Yeah. <laughs> like there's I no a, book. I built a business and it was great. <laughs> and it was easy. Yeah. There's no book there. Yeah. We, um, you know, our old boxing coach that we used to say, he actually said something to me one time that I just really, it always stuck with me. It was like a couple years ago. I was just dealing with a lot. We were in the middle of a pandemic. Mm-hmm. I was in an emotionally abusive situationship and I just had um, a lot going on and money was tight. It was all, all of the above. And so I remember he, what he said to me and he was like, what if he's like, you know what? He's like, what if you made a lot of money, but then you lost a lot of money and then you made a lot of money. And he's like, and what if you fell in love, but then you got your heart broken, but then you fell in love again. And what if you took a risk and what if you failed, but what if you got back up and tried again? And he was like, what if you just went big and always had a story to tell? And I was like, fuck Charles. Yeah. I was like, that was really rom com of you. <laughs> but it, it does go into what you're saying of like, if you don't ever have anything mm-hmm. of the lows that you overcome, no one really wants to listen t- yeah. to you because no, you're like, true. what, your life's been perfect this whole time? You've yeah. never had anything go wrong? Yeah. And I think that's, there's a level of romanticizing your own life too. So when you are in the middle of mm-hmm. the harder times, like romanticize those moments too. Like this is when you go watch a movie, when you go read a book, like you don't want to just see like the straight line, flat line of like everything was perfect. Like you want the ups and downs, you want the lows, you want the climax, you want the, you know, whatever that happy ending looks like. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, there's a spiritual component to it too. That is, I know that at the end of this, like I'm okay. Like you can't take any of this with you. So it's going to go up, it's going to go down, but it's just the journey. And like, it's all experience. And that's something like I always try to tell myself, like give yourself grace because it's all experience. That's what it comes down to. And then in the process, while you're here, if you have something that you want to make happen, then you got to stick, stick to it. Like you got to keep going. Cause if yeah. you, you know, you give up, yeah. it's a wrap. Make like a contract for yourself and sign it and just basically be yeah. like, I'm, I'm, this is, this is what I'm going to do and I'm not going to break it and like stay loyal to your word for yourself. Mm-hmm. Not to, not for even anybody else's sake, yeah. but for your own. Yeah. I tweeted that the other day. I said, make a deal with yourself and don't negotiate. And yeah. it was, it's actually one of my most retweeted tweets. <laughs> I'm really trying to become a, t- a tweeter. Oh. Like I love, well, no, I've always been a tweeter because Twitter is my favorite form of social media by far. And um, so anytime I get like more than like one like, <laughs> I'm like, it's a really exciting. When she hits three. <laughs> it's a great day for it's me. It's a good news minute. And this one got like 101. So I was like, <laughs> whoa. Whoa, big day. Um, It was a big day for me. Thank you. Um, But no, it's true. And that's something that I've been, that's actually been my mantra lately is not negotiating on deals I make with myself because I'm really trying to hit a new level and like a new paradigm of um, how I take care of myself. And then also just like my, the work that I put out, like just all of that, you know, and something I've noticed in that process is that you maybe can't necessarily do it all. Like one thing that, so I've been really good about like my own um, routine, my own work, my own health. Like I've been really good about that. One thing that has suffered is my relationships. Um, And to me, that's like, that was a deal that I was willing to make. Like I was willing to say, 
my social life will go down. Like I won't, I'm, I'm not out. I don't go, really go out much. Like I don't go on dates. Like I'm not at the club. I don't really do much of anything except I'm, I'm like kind of like locked in right now. And so that is something I will say too, like on this note of pursuing your dreams or whatever you're going after, like there might come a time that you sacrifice something and, I, and it might not be your social life. Maybe for you, it's something else. For me, that was what I was down to give up. Yeah. Um, but you know, I don't think like you can always have all everything running at once. If you are like, I want to build this empire. I want to build, I want to build a Nike or I want to pursue something so heavily. Like at least in my opinion, like you kind of have to focus on something and because all the things that came his way, like I'm sure he was really focused on, you know, accomplishing them. And I think like a big part, yes, you have to stay true. But the other half of that is you have to be like focused and determined. And I don't know. I don't know if we all know that these days. No, I actually, I was thinking about this while I was listening to this, that I do wonder, you know, last week we talked about how no one wants to work hard. <laughs> and I was curious. I'm like, I wonder if we're going to see a with no one wanting to work hard. Mm -hmm. Are we going to see in a de decline is probably not the right word, but just like, are we going to see a not a boom of innovation? Mm -hmm. Right. Like we have like the Elons. Yeah. The Mark Zuckerberg's what however you feel about them on a personal level whatever yeah, but like they they are creating things yeah. right well we're not I haven't like seen this like new generation pop up of like really like inventors or innovators mm -hmm. or people who are like the game changers yeah. right we're not seeing that yeah or and if we are I, I maybe maybe there are people I just haven't seen them mm -hmm. so like outright and in your face creating right. like really incredible things mm -hmm. and I'm like I'm I'm curious because like those people are still creating but what happens I mean eventually yeah. like we're not you know immortal they're mm -hmm. going to unfortunately die yes, yeah. so that what yeah. happens when they die? What happens mm -hmm. to the people? Like, yeah, they have a leg. They've built a legacy. Yeah. Incredible. But what happens to the new things that then come and the new companies that then it's come true. after them? And I think we've had that conversation before. Like, is there a correlation between lack of integrity to a craft and the rise of social media? Right. Because like now we did talk about this a little bit on the previous episode. Now this next generation of people their online presence comes before their offline. We never had that, like us and then the generations before us. It was always your real life came before your online presence. This is the first time we're seeing it switch. Mm -hmm. And so I always wonder, is there a correlation between that? Because you don't necessarily need as much integrity to a craft or to hone a craft the way like you used to, right? Like you used to have to put in the time to really build your real life, your real career. If that meant you wanted mm -hmm. to be an athlete, if that meant you wanted to be an artist, whatever. But now all you really need are these like 15, 30 second clips to you go create viral. A highlight reel. You create a highlight reel. And I have wondered that, and I don't have the answer, but I have always, I, I, you know, is, is there a correlation between In my that? opinion, yes. That's what but, I would but think that's, too. But again, I've I've got no proof or science to yeah. back that up. I'm just guessing that like when you only care about making your life look great in 15 seconds, mm -hmm. what else? What about the rest? Because I got to tell you, I didn't document other than like the own, my own pictures on my phone. Yeah. I didn't document a single thing from this weekend as right. far as like I took some selfies with my family. Mm -hmm. We took pictures, but those aren't going to go anywhere. Yeah. It, it It's not going to look exciting to anyone. Right. And I don't feel the need to share that with everybody. Right. But- I too made sure that my real life was yeah. fun and exciting versus making yeah. sure it looked cool on Instagram. And that's what I wonder too about your question about like, where's that next generation of innovators? But is, is there a desire to innovate? Because that process of innovation is going to take a lot of like my head's down and I'm grinding and you're not going to see me all the time. No. And I don't know just because now the way like life works and operates and everything is like, this like world of social media and like the way we're moving, you know, so it is kind of like there might be more of a driving factor to have that, you know, because there is also a herd mentality surrounding content creators. It's mm -hmm. kind of like everyone's doing it. Is this the safest bet for me? Because I think that's a question that comes up for a lot of people economy is weird. No one's really working. I don't There's just like a lot going on. I mean, I'm not gonna say no one's working, but that's just like a 
a domino effect we're seeing. And it's like, okay, well, if everyone's doing content, if that's where the world is heading, should I be there? There's like a safety net in that herd mentality, I think. So I wonder the same thing. Are we going to see these types of the creators? Next Elon Musk. Are Elon we gonna is see- building for life on Mars so that everyone has an opportunity to experience that. Are we going to see that? But who comes at, But who, who comes, comes after next? him? Yeah. Who, who are the, the next... Right people who are creating things. And I, again, I don't know every person of the world. I'm literally just speaking right, on right, what right. I'm seeing. So and I'm sure that they are there. I just wonder if there's less maybe. Cause I think too, like when I think about this from a perspective of just like human psychology, like desire plays a role, right? Like before, before when our online presence didn't come first, you might've had a desire to be famous yeah. or a desire to be the best NFL player or the d- desire to be, you know, like the best rapper or something like that but because now, you wanted that public, you wanted that validation or you wanted that public life or you wanted the fame or the money or whatever. Yes. But now desire has changed a lot because now you can kind of get those things. Like you can get those outcomes from social media. So now you don't necessarily have to put like the same amount of work in that the Tom Brady's or the Kobe's maybe had to put in unless you have that just innate desire in yes. you. And the other thing too, like you said, like when you are working, you gave up your social life, mm-hmm. right? For me right now, I'm in a place that I'm like, I don't really care about social media a mm-hmm. lot because I'm trying to build an empire and I want to have a relationship. Right. Those are the two things I'm focused on. So I don't care about content as much as in my online right. presence. Like I care about this is my form of content doing this podcast. Right. I don't care about my online presence yeah. at all. And so that that may suffer, but I don't care as much. But I'm wondering if the people who are the innovators and are, they just don't care and they're actually building something. But because we glorify we Instagram so much, the people who are actually working, they're like, yeah, I don't give a shit about mm-hmm. what you guys all think about my Instagram. I'm mm-hmm. trying to like actually change the world. Right. I think that's a big possibility because I think there's a world in which, you know, we're just not seeing it. And we only know obviously we only know what we see or like what, what we're consuming and what's being put out. And I think too, like, it's just interesting with social media because you only, we're only seeing like the things, the parts of that people want to showcase or the things that they think other people want to see. So we don't necessarily always see those journeys. I mean, sometimes we do, this is kind of general, but, um, no, I definitely agree. And I've wondered that too. And I think if you're listening and you're like, Oh, okay, well I do want to start something or I do want to have that career. I do want to have, you know, I do have big dreams. I do want to build an empire, whatever it is, like a good place to look or a good place to start, I would say is like your life diet, which is your friends. Who do you surround yourself with? What are your daily habits? Like, what do you, how do you talk to yourself? Um, you know, what, what types of things do your friends do? And that saying, show me who your friends are and I'll show you your future. I really believe in that saying, because I think who we surround ourselves with and what we intake and what we listen to matters so much in like the way, like our thoughts Uh, form Mm -hmm. and like you know what we see our friends do we might start doing there's a world in which that's a possibility too so I think if you're like okay I do want to build an empire I do want to have a lot of success I do want to be the best yada 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 take inventory of your life as it stands today who are my friends what do I listen to how do I talk to myself what are my daily habits what do I do for me what do I what do I intake every single day and just all of that that I just went over does that align with the person I want to be and do those things align with my goals. I would say that's like the best place to begin. Yeah, no, I totally, totally agree. And along with all of that too, is that we have to be like, when you're, when you're along with like never giving up, you have to have a dream of like where you want Mm -hmm. to go. So if you're just like never giving up working, 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 but like, what are you trying to accomplish? Yeah. Like have and, and that dream may change because you mm-hmm. the dream that I had three years ago, four years ago is very different than my dream today, but mm-hmm. I'm constantly working towards something. And it's just like, if that's what you want, you never give up. Yeah. So that is a big that's thing. True. And you have to get to a point in your life where you really believe like I can do anything and I'm yes. going to do what I want. Yes. And that's the biggest one. It's like really like you need to have the mindset of a winner mm-hmm. if you want to win, which I would assume everybody should. And so- 
you have to believe that like that it really starts and ends with you. Like I will say that obviously like other things are going to play a role, of course, but like having that mindset is so important and be able to have a dream of where you want to go. And when you are fantasizing it, visualizing it, whatever you want to call it, like dream in detail. And remember we were on New Year's Eve, we were having dinner and the um, guy who owns the restaurant, we were talking to him and he was saying how he always imagined the restaurant and he knew exactly what it was going to look like. And he told us and he was like dream in detail. And we loved that because we were like that's such a good point like you have to be able to know like where you're headed and where you want to go but you need to like also imagine those details and make it really real to you so that you know like when things get hard when you're in situations where something keeps coming up left and right or you have to continue building like no I know how this I want this to look I know the details in my head it's actually crazy in the book he there's a part where he talks about he he gets married and they're look him and his wife are looking to buy a house mm-hmm. and he says that his when he was younger his sisters one time be like if you build that house your dream house that you want to live in mm-hmm. so he drew his dream house and all the things around it yeah the house had everything in the picture mm-hmm. and it's crazy because he d- had no idea yep. the house even existed so like yep. that was his dreaming in detail he drew out yeah the picture of his house you guys honestly this book is probably yeah. my most favorite book ever i really i highly recommend it for anyone yeah w- what regardless if you want to start a business or not start a business it's just such a great yeah. motivating of like i can do anything book if you it's like really this incredible. you should read zero to one based on what you're saying and okay. what you like. You so should maybe, do zero to one okay. next. Um, I have a list of audible books I'm going to I'm gonna. Yeah, it's funny. Um, I actually, so I was reading over my like old journal entries. And so I always, I think I told you this, but like I always growing up, like, so I was never the girl who like would imagine like a wedding or a family or anything. Like I always in my head was like, I want to build an empire. And for some reason, and I, I grew up with a single mom who like really hustled and held it down. So like, and that was like my role model, you know, she still is. So I think I always like romanticized the, that idea. And so something that I always wanted, I don't know if it's because I saw this on movies. I don't know why, but I always wanted like a high rise apartment that I lived in by myself where I would like make dinner and like light candles and have music playing. And then I would like work late. Like that was always what I romanticized was like those moments of like working late with candles lit and, you know, music in the background, like blah, blah, blah. And like my apartment. And I would like have a bunch of books and all of that. And so I had always done that when I was younger. And then like when I was like 25, 24, 25, whatever, I guess I put it in a journal that that was like something I wanted to experience. And the other day I was at home. Oh, and like I would pour a glass of wine or I would make a cup of tea, whatever. The other day I was at home and I'm like lighting candles and I have like uh, piano playing in the background and I'm like getting I'm like making dinner in like my little silk robe getting ready to work and I was like and I was gonna work late like I was gonna it was like 8 p.m or something and I was gonna sit down and just get some work done and it occurred to me I was like oh my god this is exactly what I pictured and I had in my in my head I always had floor to ceiling windows and I have them now and I don't have like some like insane penthouse on like the 50th floor or anything but like it's it's not that but it is a high rise building. It is the floor to ceiling windows. And I had the exact, like the mood lighting and the background and all of that. And I was like, that's so crazy. Like we really do create our realities, yeah, absolutely. even when you don't realize it, like we're always, always, always creating. And so I, that was like a full circle moment that I had the other night. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> wild. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. But it's a good feeling too. It's so good. And that stuff always surprises. It's happened to us too, where we'll think of something and it will pop up or, or we'll ask for something and it will show up. Yeah. Um, and it shouldn't surprise me anymore because I know like how consciously I, like I can create, but it surprises me every single time because yeah. I'm always like, whoa. Yeah. Um, but yeah, okay. Well, love that for us. And this was such a good conversation to have right now just because there's so much in the media about the world going to shit. And I think it's really important to remember like while that is a perspective, there is always an alternate perspective. Well, also, again, with the highs and lows. The world's gone to shit before, guys. Yeah. We've had lots of wars. We've had lots of yeah. we've had lots of terrible things happen in the world. Yeah. And I'm not I'm not trust me, there are people going through it. So I'm not trying to be like, who cares? But yeah. again, no. there's highs and lows. Yeah. So there's we're we're in a low yeah. and there will be highs where yeah. we're all coming up and it's a great time. Exactly. And so so yeah. the stock market has fallen before. We've had terrible things happen before. 100%. And guess what? The world leaders mm-hmm have way too much ego yeah. to let everything really fall to shit. I mean, so the we're going to come out. Is, I think you also have to choose to be 
and you can say that this is a naive perspective. I don't care. You have to be optimistic and you have to be a little delusional when it comes to your own life. Yeah. You have to be. And that is my, I will give you that advice repeatedly. I really don't care what's going on. You have to say, you have to be irrationally optimistic actually. And you have to say, it doesn't matter. It does not matter what is going on because I create my reality because I will win. Like yeah. I, I told somebody that the other day, I was like, losing is no longer in my reality. That is not an option for me. And you have to make that decision. And people will say to you, that's naive. You need to pay attention to what's happening in the world. And that is because they project their own beliefs or they have limiting beliefs or they have that yeah. lack in their head. And you have to remember that. Well, also there's, there's a wise saying, ignorance is bliss. Yeah. And so right now I'm just going to be ignorant yeah. and stay in my own bubble. Be, be a little delusional yeah. if you are pursuing something much larger than yourself. I think it's really crucial to that process. Yeah. I really do believe that. I agree. Okay. Well, Wrapping up. Now that we have motivated everybody, I'll take People 10% like, no. of all your future business endeavors. Everyone's going to be like, you didn't motivate me one damn bit. <laughs> you just told I me did to a read. great job. She's going to be like, you just told me to read a book. <laughs> yeah, facts. Okay, you guys, moving on to our sexy, sexy. What is the sexiest thing to you this week or right now? Um, My sexiest thing is reassurance through physical touch. And I don't mean anything sexual. I just mean like... Mans is very good about like holding my hand, yeah. loving on me, showing me that like I am important and he mm -hmm. is attracted to me. And like that to me is I'm like, I feel yeah. really good about this yeah. for myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like that's really important to me. I didn't realize how important it important it was to me in the past and how much that was something yeah. I needed to feel right. Like What's good your, in a relationship. In your love language. Yeah. I didn't realize because it's yeah. not something I've ever had before. Mm -hmm. And he is very much like we he's yeah. very affectionate with me and yeah. in a way of like oh okay you really like me and i yeah. really like you and yeah. this is this is great so mm -hmm. i didn't realize that's something i needed so that is my sexy okay, sexy i love that week. for you guys Mine's what like, is yours? <laughs> Mine's a little different. Oh, um, interesting. <laughs> please. <laughs> this week <laughs> it's someone who rides a motorcycle. <laughs> Mm -hmm. because I, I'm not even, I'm not going to get into the reason why. Um, but I, <laughs> okay. I just feel like really good about that. I've always loved like that aesthetic, like a man on a bike. I'm just like, I'd love that for you. I've never been on like one. a sons, sons of anarchy vibe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got yeah. it. Cause like, there's a very, like there's a two different, vibe. like man's just started. He just learned how to ride a motorcycle. Mm -hmm. So he's looking to buy one, but I, I can pretty much guarantee that like yeah. him on a motorcycle versus like your type on a motorcycle might my be a little ideal, different. <laughs> my ideal aesthetic. No. Yeah. I definitely, it's more of like a biker gang vibe versus like a, okay. you know, but, um, I'm very here for it. I've never seen sons of anarchy. I might have to start it. Oh yeah. I've never seen it, but you know me, I can't watch anything. I'm so bad. Okay. At I got to tell you though, sons of anarchy is really, really good. Is so it? Yeah, okay. it's very. I thought it was incredible. It's very. I mean, it's a biker gang, and like, mm -hmm. there's a lot of like they shoot people. Mm -hmm. There's a new one called Mayans out mm -hmm. that's th like the uh, the other gang that they were like a rival okay. with. But I have to tell you, I really feel like you would love Sons of. Start the first couple episodes, okay, and see what you think. I think you'd be yeah. I think you would love it. Okay, great. Yeah. There's that's a lot great. of wars. There's a, like there's like this gang yeah. war stuff. I think you'd I know. be into I need it. to get better at watching things. I really like can never get into anything, but I'm gonna try that. Um but yeah, so that's that's mine this week. We just love a man on a motorcycle. I think that's hot. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you'll sh maybe you'll share why that became your sexy sexy one day. <laughs> no, we um, probably won't. <laughs> <laughs> okay um, you guys thank you so much for tuning in please rate review subscribe we are now on youtube so go subscribe to our yeah. youtube channel it's a very exciting time we have 52 subscribers <laughs> i'm really happy about it oh my it. god that's so exciting yeah. okay you guys thank you so much for tuning in you can find us on instagram at 